Hello everyone, hope you're doing well, and I hope you had a good Thanksgiving, if you're in America. If not, uh, hope you had a good random Thursday. I've been feeling a tad under the weather lately, so if my voice sounds off, that's probably why. Anyway, on with the video. 150 million years ago, there was no Britain. Or, there was, it was just all underwater. A shallow, tropical ocean covered most of where Britain is today during the Jurassic period, an ecosystem filled with life. From ammonites to ichthyosaurs, these oceans teemed with all manner of prehistoric creatures, including this one, what seems to be a cross between a dinosaur and a whale. It's a Leoplerodon, Charlie! A magical Leoplerodon! Yep, that's right. Today's video will be focusing on the giant, but misunderstood pliosaur, Liopleurodon. Discovered in France in 1873, this animal has a name that means smooth-sided teeth, named for the smooth, rounded, fossilized teeth that were used to describe it, three of them specifically. This animal was part of a group called the Pliosaurs, a group of now extinct aquatic reptiles that were definitely not dinosaurs. Don't call them dinosaurs, please, I'm begging you. While Liopleurodon definitely wasn't the largest of the pliosaurs, and definitely was not as large as the gigantic one popularized by BBC's Walking with Dinosaurs series, it was by no means small, at just over 2 tons in weight and growing up to 30 feet long. If you encounter this thing in the Jurassic Sea, you're gonna need a bigger boat. Yay for ham-fisted movie references. Its skull, at around 5 feet long, made up a sixth of its entire body length, meaning it would have had a fearsome bite. This animal was carnivorous, as evidenced by its sharp teeth, and was most likely the apex predator of its environment, hunting fish, sharks, ichthyosaurs, and even other pliosaurs. It used its four relatively large flippers to propel itself through the waters at high speeds, and some estimate it could reach up to 25 miles per hour at top velocity, perhaps hunting like a great white shark and ambushing its prey from below. Liopleurodon was also similar to sharks in that it was probably able to smell its prey through the water. Even though they, as reptiles, breathed air, they were able to pull water into their nose and smell it with a very directional sense of smell, as evidenced by their more forward-facing nostrils, meaning that they would have been able to use this ability to locate their prey from potentially miles away. There are currently two species within the Liopleurodon genus that are officially recognized, L. ferox and L. pachydeus. One former species called L. grossurve gr gr grossu I have no clue. Uh, it's this word. But it's thought now to be a member of the Pliosaurus genus, although it may even be its very own genus. Pliosaurs, being reptiles, probably evolved from a terrestrial creature. The only question is which one. The group almost certainly came from some sort of terrestrial archosaur, that is, a group of animals that includes crocodilians, birds, dinosaurs, pterosaurs, synapsids, etc. Some theorize that pliosaurs and the long-necked plesiosaurs evolved from a common ancestor, perhaps something akin to the Triassic Novosaurus, before popping up in the early Jurassic to Cretaceous. As many animals seem to do, the pliosaurs seem to increase in size as time goes on, starting with the earliest known pliosaur, Romaliosaurus, being around 20 feet long, with later genres such as pliosaurus growing up to twice that length. Of course, this is just a generality and not a rule. The late Cretaceous... Oh boy. Dolike... Dolikorine... This thing, for example, was a dwarf compared to other pliosaurs and lived in the late Cretaceous period. In the end, the pliosaurs were ultimately wiped out by the same extinction event that wiped out the dinosaurs and 80% of all animal life on the planet. Being big doesn't help you in that circumstance. Their niches were filled then by sharks, whales, and others, and the Liopleurodon and cousins are now relegated to their stony remains in the earth. But we're finding more about them every year, and someday may have a lot more complete map of how they came into being and how they lived their lives. For now, though, thanks for watching and stay curious.